A very good day to you. I'm Hank Gross, MidHudsonNews.com. It's Friday, March 1st. The news today brought to you by the Galleria at Crystal Run. Friends of the Upper Delaware River are developing a plan for the future of that section of the river. Part of the process includes the group seeking feedback from a number of interested parties, says Executive Director Jeff Skelding. The whole plan is going to rely on collaboration amongst all interested watershed stakeholders. Examples of those would be local governments, highway departments, streamside landowners, farmers, anglers, people who enjoy the river, people who care about the river. We're trying to put a first ever plan together for the entire watershed. Deputy Executive Director Sherry Resty Thomas says a lot of planning and discussion has gone into developing the plan. A 36-year-old Skylar Lake woman was struck and killed while standing in the center lane of the thruway in the town of Woodbury. State police say that just after 1 a.m. on Tuesday, Erica Gargan, who was 36, was standing in the center lane and was fatally struck. Troopers said the driver of the 2021 Honda CRV, David Millman, who's 67, of Washington, New Jersey, was not injured. The incident remains under investigation. Anyone who may have witnessed the incident is asked to call the state police at 845-344-5300. The traffic circle at the intersection of Smith Street, Creek Road, and Salt Point Turnpike in Poughkeepsie was renamed Corey Ingram Circle in 2018. The Poughkeepsie native was killed while serving in the Navy aboard the USS John McCain in 2017 off the coast of Singapore. On Thursday, dozens gathered to officially dedicate the memorial inside the roundabout, as well as unveil the first five monuments along with the neighboring Champions Walk. The project, according to Mario Johnson of the Poughkeepsie Alliance, was years in the making and pays tribute to Ingram and five members of the Poughkeepsie community who made significant contributions to the city and its residents. He's here. The Easter Bunny is visiting the Galleria at Crystal Run every day now until Easter. And he's not camera shy. Get your picture taken with Mr. Peter Cottontail. Children, families, and even pets are welcome. Now you can make an appointment ahead of time at whereisbunny.com. Reservations are strongly encouraged. Just go to galleriacrystalrun.com for all the details and happy Easter. The State Public Service Commission has rejected Hudson Valley Water Company's request to extend a Public Service Commission show cause order. The order requires the company to submit documentation demonstrating its ability to operate a water system by today, and Wednesday's decision upholds that deadline. The PSC has the authority to appoint a temporary operator if the commission deems Hudson Valley Water Company incapable of maintaining adequate service. Senator Michelle Hinchy supports the PSC's decision not to extend the show cause order. A truck driver from New Rochelle was sentenced to six months in jail for stealing a semi-tractor trailer truck containing more than $32,000 worth of alcohol from a lot off Interstate 87 in Yonkers. 28-year-old Kelvin Garcia Loriano pled guilty to grand larceny. Republican Louis Ingrassia Jr. has gained the endorsement of the Town of Wallkill and City of Middletown GOP committees in his bid to run for the 100th Assembly District seat, being vacated by Democrat Aileen Gunther, who will retire at the end of the year. The district includes most of Sullivan County and the two municipalities in Orange County. Ingrassia, who is the Public Works Commissioner in Wallkill, appears to have locked up his party's endorsement, while Democrats have endorsed Attorney Paula K. Drapkin of Rock Hill as their candidate. Gunther has held that post for 20 years and was first elected after her husband, Jake Gunther, who represented the district, died suddenly. A 50-year-old Wallkill woman was sentenced in Orange County Court to two to six years in prison after she pled guilty to grand larceny. It's alleged that over a two-year period, Between 2019 and 2021, Shirley Bowens submitted fraudulent bills to her insurance company that misrepresented that she and members of her family had been hospitalized and received various treatments. Investigation determined no such hospitalization or treatments had occurred. Through the scheme, Bowens, who had experience in medical billing, 
stole some $90,000 from her insurance company, police say. She admitted in court that she had stolen the money. I'm Hank Gross, MidHudsonNews.com. The news today brought to you by the Galleria at Crystal Run.